Morning, everyone. Welcome to Treyer Wilderness. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Treyer Wilderness, my name is Tammy Treyer, and my family and I embarked on an off-grid homesteading journey a decade ago. And right now, uh, I am sitting on our new parcel, and we will be building a tiny log cabin from the ground up. We have been working this land since spring and preparing it, and we should be embarking on that journey in the next two weeks here uh, as we finalize things on the old homestead and are moving forward. So it's pretty exciting. And I am able to do this with you today here because we got our internet in place on Monday. So it is a huge saving grace. And uh, what's also a saving grace is that our internet requires very little power uh, to run all the equipment. So I am able to do that off of a battery pack, which is absolutely phenomenal and I'm so excited. Hopefully I won't lose you. Um, I believe I've got a full charge on that battery pack, but it's new to me. Um, it is the uh, Mountain Boys, so I have power right now. If you lose me, that is why, but um, really excited. Things are all coming together and lining up well, and as you can see, it is a beautiful, beautiful day here in northern Idaho. So I see people jumping on. Yes, good morning, Miss Tammy. Good morning, Miss Diana. Yes, it is a beautiful, beautiful day here. It is windy. I've kind of got the tripod nestled between a bag and some books here so that it doesn't go taking off one way or the other. But it is pretty windy here too. So um, yes, good morning, good afternoon. So how are your chickens doing, Miss Diana? And what is going on down there? You've been very, very busy on your homestead. Um, so uh, share with us what you've got going on. And I ask that of everybody, uh, whether you're watching the replay or the live version of this, what do you've got going on in your neck of the woods? How are things going? Um, what are you working on? And I'm going to very quickly share this on our Facebook page so that others can join in while you guys respond to that question. Things are very crazy here, and you're gonna have to forgive me today. I feel really exhausted. Um, I had to run to town, to the big city yesterday to get materials, and oh, man, that wipes me out. Wipes me out. I'm grateful I don't have to do that again for probably another month, so that excites me. All right, real quick, let me do this. done okay when I'm finished here I'm actually gonna do some writing while I'm sitting here this is just so awesome and I do actually have a shade tree this little tree behind me is like the only shady spot besides directly in front of the chimney over here so I'm excited to have a little shade the Sun is hot but it is a beautiful day our temperatures are definitely changing um, our seasons are changing so we will definitely be biting the bullet and chopping uh, at the bit to get our house under roof uh, as the weather and the seasons change. Not to mention we have hunting season coming up very soon here. Actually, archery is open, I believe. Um, good morning, Miss Shelley. Good morning, good morning. Um, she is dehydrating her beets. The guys are coming up here behind me, so you're gonna hear some uh, diesel for a little bit here. Uh, Diana says we have the layers in the coop now, but the boys are still in totes in the house. They are. The, the poopiest things. <laughs> I'm sure boys always are. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Miss Tammy says, busy bringing in herbs to dry. Might get to the low 30s early next week, so don't want to lose them in the frost. Also, JJ and Benjamin will be working on redoing the house front this weekend. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Lots of work, lots of progress. And yeah, our mornings are getting really, you know, our nights are cooling off and our mornings are quite cold. It was 39 here the other day. So yeah, and, and you know, we are still getting 80s, 85 in the afternoon. The other day, was that Monday? It was like in the 60s. It was awesome. I love layer weather where you can just layer in your clothes and just the change in the season. My favorite is fall, so fall and spring. 
Miss Diana says, I am not doing anything today because I have, oh, injured my shoulder. Hard to even lift my arm to type. That's not good. Well, we will definitely be praying for you, girl. That is no fun. I can relate to that with last week, not being able to move my hands and wrists. So, um, yeah, God has to tell us sometimes it's time to rest because we're not... Um, seeing it as clearly as he is so rest and be well and take care of yourself and we'll be praying for you shelly says we have been having cooling temperatures at night but it sounds like it is going to get warmer this weekend with the temperatures near 30 degrees celsius she says praying for you diana oh one of the disadvantages of being outside the bees are pretty crazy not as bad as they were a couple years ago but they're pretty crazy so you guys are busy and everybody is busy right now. I think everybody is really pushing uh, for the change of season to get things in from their gardens and harvesting, canning, preserving, which is awesome and so smart at this point. Getting chickens in place is another really smart thing to do and uh, getting your um, animals on the homesteads once again. Oh, good morning, Mabel. Glad to have you joining me. And actually, I'm if for you, it is afternoon. She is in Maryland, so welcome. Glad to have you. Um, Mabel, one of the questions I ask everybody is, what are you up to on your homestead and your home? What do you have going on? We would love to hear and have you share as well. Um, and you can read through the comments, but we're glad to have you joining us. And, uh, you know, I, it's just so important. We have that rush of seasons always. And um, I think for our community, especially, we are all like-minded people that are striving to be more prepared, more self-reliant, and seeing the forest through the trees with everything that's going on right now, and not knowing what is ahead with our election and everything that's been transpiring. You know, it's really important for us to think ahead, plan ahead, think out of the box, you know, uh, stock up on things that we can't produce ourselves and just you know be ready for whatever may come our way uh, the key thing always is keeping god first and knowing that regardless what transpires if our eyes are on him and we're seeking him he will take care of us we've I hope and pray that we've proven that over and over again with just the things that have transpired here on our homestead over the last four years but um it's just really i just can't express the importance of it right now uh, to really keep being diligent in our attempts and our efforts to uh, take care of our families, take care of ourselves and not being dependent on any system because the systems are surely breaking and failing and um, it's just always good to have that um, ability to take care of ourselves regardless of what's going on around us. I saw Mabel had a comment. Let me see here. Um, not doing anything. Have two bad knees and oh, sir, psoriasis and use a wheelchair. Well, that's okay. You can do lots from the position you are in. Um, I was in a very debilitated state myself uh, four years ago and was flat on my back for almost a year. And I know that it is a hard place to be, but God has a way of using us in those places. So um, don't feel that you um, can't do anything from that place. But we will be praying for you because we know that that can be a real challenge um, to be in, in a place like that. Um, but God has amazing ways to work miracles in, in all situations. And uh, many of us here have experienced that and um, praise him and thank him for that. So um, I don't know, Mabel, if you're new to following us or not, um, but we just walked out of a four-year very extreme um, financial situation after my debilitating health situation. And... Uh, you know, God has miraculously blessed us in so many ways in, 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 through that process. And, um, you know, we went six and a half months without an income and we never went without a meal because of the way we live. And, and the way we live is because God nudged us to this lifestyle. And uh, so when we follow God's lead in everything that we do, um, 
and, and we seek him. He, he will provide. He will take care of us. So know that you are surrounded by a very prayerful community right now that will definitely be lifting you and um, thinking of you as we progress in our weeks. So I'm really glad that you joined us. Um, Mabel, do you uh, share a little bit of uh, a background on, on um, your mindset as far as uh, preparedness and, and looking at uh, different things uh, as far as uh, plans for your future? So how many of you guys are dealing with fires right now? We had a lot of smoke blow in this week, and it was a result of fires south of us that the wind was blowing up, but it was very strange because it came in really fast, and I guess that was the result of the wind just pushing it all day, but all of a sudden we were just surrounded by smoke. It's pretty a pretty crazy um, thing when you're in the middle of the wilderness because we are in a tinderbox right now. We did have rain um, one morning, but it was just for a couple hours. It wasn't anything super heavy. And of course, as dry as it is, it just dissipates. So, um, our seasons will change and I, I know that moisture will appear. Um, and of course we kind of want that to hold off with our building, but you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. Our concrete is in. That was the main concern. Uh, Miss Mabel says tomorrow will be my son's 40th birthday. He died when he was 13 months and one week. Well, girl, we will be praying for you for that, too, because that is a very um, hard thing because regardless how many years ago it was, um, that always touches and is still uh, part of your heart and your your makeup. And I know that there's some others here that can um, relate to that. So, um, so sorry for your loss. And forgive me, uh, though it is getting brighter and I'm having a harder time seeing. And you know what? As a matter of fact, I'm realizing I'm going to need to move and adjust here because my machine is in direct sun. So in a little bit here, it's going to get too hot and shut off. So let me move that quick. And I'll be able to see. Ah, to see. Bear with me here. I will move it down here. Bear with me. I haven't done an outside one in a while. This is nice though. This weather is just wonderful. I could not be inside. And my big girl, you guys know that my copper had surgery. And that has been quite a challenge keeping her still. And that big gaping wound is slowly healing, but it is slow. And trying to keep her still is still a challenge. Okay, there we go. Um, hey, Kelly's on here. Hello, hello. Yeah, stay safe, you guys, with the wind because the wind is one of the big, biggest factors right now with these fires. It's just blowing them around. Okay, let me go back here. Okay, hey, Miss Courtney, you are on here too. Oh, nice, Diana says, so sorry, Mabel, I'll be praying for you. Okay, so you have a wood stove and lots of wood. That is good. That is absolutely huge how do you do your cooking mabel do you um do you do the preparation and preparing are you able to do that um from your wheelchair or are you having to does someone else assist you um, good afternoon miss kelly and miss shelley says it's so hard to lose a child mabel i have a friend who celebrates her son's birthday every year even though he died years ago at 14. yes i know many many people that do the same. Um, quite a few friends and um, just some of the people we follow um, on YouTube and, and different programs that do the same thing. And you know, it's a part of our life. It is extremely hard, but they, they blessed our lives and you know, it's not something that you can forget. So honoring them and, and, and celebrating them and remembering them is really important, but it doesn't get any easier, I'm sure. So we will continue to pray for you, Mabel. And we appreciate you sharing this information because, you know, this community of people that you are surrounded with, all of us have seen the miracle that comes from praying. And we are very prayerful and, and very loving. I love our community. You know, I am just the vessel that starts all this and that has initiated all this and that God is using as the tool. But you guys are such a huge part of this. You know, 
many of you come here to be fed. I am fed also by you guys being present. So I just think this is so amazing and that's what community is all about. So know that you are being uh, loved on and cared for, Mabel, very greatly. Um, Kelly says, Wendy here and supposed to be 93. Yeah, we've had our share of hot. Um, it has bumped down from the 90s into the 80s, which we are thankful for. And we will be really thankful. Our mornings are cool. Our evenings are cool. So that's when we will be working most and, and um, milling. And that will hopefully be taking place in the next week and a half or so. Um, Diana says, we don't have a fire issue here in, the nor in northwest Georgia. We have issues with storms and tornadoes. Yeah, so praying for you there too. And there's such devastation. Um, I'm trying to think what the name of that. Was it Heidi? that came into Louisiana. There was a lot of damage there too. It's just, it, yeah, you're in, you're in that different zone. So still preparing for these things. Um, it's really important. I did a, a post on preparation for uh, fire and the same would apply for these storms in a lot of ways. Um, if you're able to get out of Dodge before they hit, but then also knowing how to hunker down in these storms and in these situations is really, really important. And, you know, being prepared for those things with uh, lack of power, um, having backup generators and things so that you can continue to keep your uh, refrigerators and freezers running. Um, and so forth, stocking up on water. Uh, Kelly says, can six pints of basil, garlic, green bees. Oh, those sound wonderful this morning. And working on choke cherries and tomato sauce right now. I have to imagine your house smells really amazing. Oh, that sounds awesome. My mom used to dill. She used to, she used to pickle um, green beans. And oh man, that was something that I really, really enjoyed. And that's something that I greatly miss out here. We have not had fresh green beans for 10 years. That's almost a crime. Um, they're hard to, f we haven't grown them ourselves, but that is in the lineup. That was something that we canned a lot of growing up. And that's something I want to be able to put on my shelves. We've had enough. I shouldn't say that we did have some five years ago when we had our garden going, but for the last four, we haven't had any, and I do greatly miss them. That and corn. So we will, we have potatoes growing right now, and I will be putting some um, different greens in a couple pots so that we have some lettuce and things to still tap into and some of the fall greens to tap into while we're building. Um, Shelly says, I so wish I could have a wood stove, but they are really not encouraged. Looking for a secondary way to heat the home if power is out. Yeah, that really stinks. I could not imagine not having wood heat. We are surrounded by tall timber, so... Um, are, we have a huge uh, surroundings available to us with the firewood, but I love the dry heat. I love the, the warmth of the fire and just the glow of the fire. I could not imagine that. So yeah, it does stink. I know there's certain areas that, that have banned wood stoves and I know there's other areas like Tammy's where they're certain when it gets too dry or the the um, barometric pressure is a certain way and there's too much smoke staying in the valleys. They, they are asked to stop burning. So that's just, that's just crazy. And yeah, having backup of such things is so important. You know, who knows what's ahead here with these elections and what's going to transpire. So being able to take care of ourselves this winter is going to be an important aspect of things. Um, Kelly is saying hello to Shelly and vice versa. Yeah. Can you do pellet stoves? I imagine they just don't want any kind of stove, any kind of smoke. Um, oh, Kelly says prayers for Mabel. That's awesome. I love how you guys love on each other. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Shelly says, I so look forward to our Wednesdays together. Miss you when I cannot be with you. Ditto. You know, the same is true. It's like, and I know I was late this morning. Uh, we had to take care of the dog and we were moving some things up here and I, and I wanted to do it here. So I had to gather all my stuff to come up here. So but I loved on these outside settings. So it's just, for me, this is like where I renew and, um, I don't know. Let me spin it around. 
there's my little chimney, my big chimney. That one was actually on my windowsill, and I got a pedestal so the dog went peeing on the on the thing because I know he can't hike that high anymore. He's getting old, but I have candles in them because right now we can't have a fire. And then that is my view. So you can see why this spot here is just very renewing for me. Oop. I come here, <laughs> sorry, nothing like being right in your face. I, I come here often. I come to the woods often. Um, I need to be outside. It's very important for my makeup. And I think that's something that we all need, but we may not all realize it. Um, and thank you for sharing that, Shelly. Um, Mabel says, my husband does the shopping and buys prepared foods most of the time. Wish I could try growing our own food. Well, you know, Mabel, there's a lot of people. Robin often joins us here live. She's from the South, I believe. Yes, if I'm not mistaken. But she she grows a lot of stuff. She can't grow a garden in her location. So she has little pots on her windowsills and, and different places at her home that she grows stuff so that she still feel is able to get fresh so she has a lot of herbs growing and lettuces and greens growing on her windowsills and things so there's still ways to do it um, and it's it's a wonderful feeling when you can grow things and, and nurture things and see things uh, you know sprouting it's just a it's a good feeling you know that's part of our makeup that's how God made us was to live off the land to be of the land and you know I'm reading a book right now this is kind of funny I'm not reading it well I am I'm reading a book at night and I'm listening to an audio book during the day it's crazy um, I like f filling myself with uh, just information uh, but I want to share the name of the book with you and I'm trying to find my uh, audibles app um, it's, it's really crazy though it's, it's called getting your life back I believe is what it's called. Ooh, it won't let me in there. Here we go. And that's really funny. That is not my library. I don't know what it connected me with. Um, Eldridge is the author's name. Let me see if I can look it up while I'm in here. I wanted to share this because it's a book that you guys I know would find... John Eldridge is the name of the is the name of the author, and it's Get Your Life Back, and it is about, um, you know, how we are all so saturated by the notifications on our phone and Facebook and and all those things. And he gave a statistic yesterday that 93 percent of our of the average person's life is spent inside. So he gave the um, example that if we live to be a hundred, ninety three days of our ninety three years of our life would be spent inside, and seven would be spent outside. And when you really put that into perspective, that's just sad awing and scary all at the same time but it it's true and the average person does spend a lot of time inside because they are comfortable inside their home which is a good thing but at the same time when you're outside the renewal you get from outside people don't realize and it's like he was saying you know because of the lifestyle most people choose what they surround themselves with is plastic toxins you know, where outside you're surrounded by the aromas and the trees and the wind and, and the air and, and water and, and sounds and sights. And beauty is a renewing thing. And a lot of us neglect that. And, you know, I wanted to share on that today just because so many of us are stuck inside. And, and we have the ability to change that. So many people are because... It's really interesting how he spoke about how it was a progressive change. And it was, you know, if you really think about it, when the internet came about and things started to progress and first you had a dumb phone, now you have the smartphones and the phones become such an addiction and such have such control over our lives. And you know, we've all talked about this before, but I thought I'd share with what I, you know, what, what he was saying and that we get so, you know, some, some of us used to 
be really active in the outdoors and now we're secluded in our homes and that's one thing that I have really changed over the last couple of years is just my des my desires to be outside but I've been making it happen and yes I need to be in front of a screen a lot of my time with my programming and my writing and web designs and such but right here today I just found a shady spot that has internet connection so I can go airplane mode, but I can also go off airplane mode and research things if I want to. I can have music playing. I can come out here and renew myself, but also work in this environment. And, you know, I realize that not everybody can do that and have that luxury. But what I'm getting at is get outside. Renew yourself. Sit on a porch, you know, um, and just take it in. And, and get out to beautiful places. You know, right now with everything going on, you know, we have the ability to go to places and be outdoors. It doesn't cost any money. And it's that time of year where you can really go out and, and get into things, you know. And that's what we intend to do this weekend. Austin is coming home for the weekend because he's off on Monday. So I'm excited about that. But we're going to get out and do some stuff. We might even go... Uh, panning for gold so you know do fun things outside do exciting things do things you haven't tried before and and get out and and be outdoors those of you that are garden gardening this year I'm a little envious because I really miss that man getting your hands dirty and your and your feet dirty because when I garden I garden barefoot I love you know they call it earthing I just called it living before but there's much to be said about it. There's a lot of healing that can come from the earth and just uh, keeping ourselves in the right place and not being stressed out all the time. And you know, our equipment causes us to be stressed because our instant reaction once our feet hit the floor in the morning is to check our phones. Um, I do that now because the mountain boy is away at college, but I did turn, you know, I did, I had disengaged from that. And it's a good feeling when you can disengage. I know many of you have disengaged from Facebook and different social media and off the internet and varying things. And you know, once you start to do that, it's hard to go back. I really, I really enjoy my peace and my quiet and, and the solitude and the lack of drama that I have, you know, that, that has been removed from my life as a result of being off of Facebook and different things. You know, I don't get involved in that kind of drama, but even to see it and to peruse it still affects us. It still affects our, our being. So I encourage you to check out that book, Get Your Life Back. I'll get a link to that for next week, but um, it's just something I'm listening to right now. Uh, as I'm packing things, it gives me the ability to be able to um, listen to the audiobooks, and I do like doing that, but there is something about um, being able to read a good book. I love reading too, and I'm actually, uh, Millie's new book is soon coming, and guys, you're going to want to get that. You're going to want to have it. Mabel, if you like to read, my uh, one dear friend has written a really awesome, um, I've been calling it a cozy apocalyptic um, it's a really good preparedness book and you can find her books by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper, all one word, M-I-L-L-I-E-C-O-P-P-E-R. Hey, Chad. Awesome. He says he has a new book for us to check out. I didn't see you pop on here. So yes, share, share. You know that we like that. I'm going to jump back here because you guys have been busy. Um, the house smells great. I'm sure it does, Miss Kelly. That sauce, or the, the beans sounded amazing. Um, wishing some of you were closer. We have lots of beans and raspberries coming on yet, and we'd be glad to share. Mm, yum. I would love green beans. Yes, I wish we were all closer for a multitude of reasons, but um, I'm grateful we can do this. But yes, for sure. Uh, Shelly says, I have canned lots, but I'm finding that we do not go through it very fast. I have made jams, but we do not eat toast very often. So I am limiting canning to stuff we will eat. Little note for you on the jams. You want to flavor your meat and really um, get an interesting uh, flavor from your, uh, for your meat. Jams and jellies I you, and pie fillings go great with meats. Um, I've done my roast up with a lot of, like with my um, pear jelly and um, 
trying to think what else we use, but I also do a pepper jelly and that goes really good with meats, but I've used my pear and, and um, peach jams in my, my roast and they turn out amazing. Uh, Diana says, I would be happy to have some, share them. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I would be happy with those too. I found out yesterday or the day before I ran into a friend who always shares her raspberries with me, Miss Candy. Um, she said she knew I was too busy, so she didn't want to tease me um, that her raspberries were in because she knew I wouldn't have time to pick them. But she saved me some in the freezer so I can make the Mountain Man a uh, raspberry pie. But she's going to give me some of her clippings so that I can um, plant them in my garden space. So I am so excited to have raspberry bushes. And I want to get blueberry bushes, and we have room for six more fruit trees. So I'm excited. Um, Kelly says, we are finishing up our firewood this weekend along with getting our five ton of hay we bought from a friend the second cutting we're having to pick up loose the baler is not working and long to fix yep so you're improvising and rolling with it that's what you got to do we hear that but that's awesome you got a lot of stuff set up and your firewood is how far out you've got quite a few years of firewood now so that's awesome while we are um, milling our logs for our house we are actually gonna you know we create a slash pile of the 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 garbage from the logs that we wouldn't use to build but what we're going to do is take time and cut that to size for our wood cook stove and start stacking that so we'll mill so long and then we'll we'll uh, cut our firewood so that is taken care of because as of right now we left the agreement we had was to leave the firewood for the new homeowner so he will be hooked up and we'll just need to, and we'll be hooked up when we're done uh, with the house so excited about that to have that in place but normally we are like you Kelly and we like to have a lot of firewood because you know we've experienced already where I went flat on my back you know had that been the mountain man I would have been out there cutting firewood and dropping trees and doing that so you know, you never know what's ahead and what might occur and being prepared enables you to keep rolling even when stuff does happen. And Kelly has experienced that this year with Mike. How is Mike doing, Kelly? Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to find out where I left off. Oh, Kelly says, beautiful view. You are indeed blessed, lady. Yes, I am. And I know that. And I, I praise God for it every day. I'm very thankful. Kelly says, Mabel, microgreens are easy to grow and good nu nutrients for your diet. Yep, very much so. Sp I love doing sprouts. I can't wait to get in my new house and have my, I have two big windows in my front of my house that are going to be growing a lot of different things. Plus we'll have the greenhouse then, but um, I love doing sprouts. I love doing sprout sandwiches or having sprouts in my eggs. Um, Diana says we are growing lots of things in large pots, less bending and they can be put anywhere they um, so they can get enough sun. Yep, exactly. When we do our garden and greenhouse, we are not doing low raised beds. We are doing high raised beds so that they are in place and ready as we age so that we can easily get to them and um, work in them and, and not struggle. So very smart, very smart way to do things. Shelly says, I have some small raised gardens, but they are not producing much. I do have a farmer's market not far that I'm able to get some local grown produce for putting up. Um, she also said, it looks like you have lots of firewood just over your shoulder, <laughs> just over your shoulder, lots of dead wood there that is still on your property. Yeah, exactly. And some of that is state, but, um, because of it being dead like that, it's not safe. It needs to come down. So that will be part of our process as we are going through here too. Now, what you see that's dead is actually a white fir and they're very sappy trees. So when you burn them, they actually create a lot of creosote and clog up the wood, the wood pipes and stuff. So that is not a wood that we will burn in the house, but we will burn here at the fire pit. And I counted 63 trees, 63 white fir. They have gotten um, a disease, so they're dying off really fast, um, which is a real shame. Um, that happened about three years after we moved here. But that will be milled up and utilized for some varying projects. It's not a good wood to build a home out of, um, but it is a wood that we can use to, you know, build the woodshed and um, build varying, like, um, 
to replace the um, different things that are here. So it'll be, a, it'll be a good wood that we can still utilize. So yeah, good eye. Yes, there's a lot of dead timber there and it's dangerous because when you have dead timber around your home, um, especially living where we do here in the Pacific Northwest where um, you end up with the wildfire season, that is something that's gonna have to go. It's just a hazard. So is uh, tall, dry grass. So we will have a better perimeter here. Um, once we are in place, we'll get the weed whacker out. Uh, we got a, a blade from our weed whacker also that'll get rid of all these little scrub oaks and such. So clearing the area and keeping your place clean is really important out here. And uh, we worked really hard to do that. Um, at the other homestead and that's what's going to happen here so once we start going all these dead trees will be dropped because they'll be dangerous they you know they're a hazard just to fall on things and fall on the house so um let me see here kelly says i'm inside enough in the winter the other three seasons i work to be outdoors enjoying each day it's my therapy yep even if it's just sitting out watching the animals or to talk and walk to the river yep exactly and you know my grandparents had their big garden and they had a little patio so when they did all of their you know they were um shucking the corn and uh you know uh the lima beans and and the varying different things that you had to and green beans even you know we'd sit out on the on the patio and and string them and and uh gather the lima beans and stuff so it was I just have such good memories of that. And we're going to have an outdoor kitchen eventually too where we'll be able to do that kind of stuff. So, yes, outside, oh my goodness, it is just, oh, it's so it's so renewing and so important for my makeup. I am so solar powered and I just, I love the outdoors. I can't believe how fast, you know, when you're in the outdoors, how fast you can, your, your spirit and soul can change. So, always encourage that guys even if it's sitting on your front porch for 15 minutes throughout a day and just taking it in um kelly says lol i get into trouble because my phone is in my purse 99 percent of the time i'm getting better at packing it with me if i'm outside i'm so not controlled by my phone yes i hear that and i am I wish I could be that way. My businesses are on my phone and I'm writing on my phone now. Every actually, I have turned my laptop on like maybe 5 times in the last 3 weeks. It's really crazy. Everything I do, it used to be on my iPad, but now it's on my phone with a little stand and a little keyboard because I just need to be mobile. I've got to be able to do what I got to do quick and easy. My keyboard fits in my bag, so um, that's actually what I brought here with me late to write later. So, you know, I'm grateful for what God blessed me, the abilities God blessed me with because they have afforded us to be able to live this way, but I do get tired of being in front of a screen. So I do need to really regiment my days and make sure I'm outside. My devotions are done on our porch every day, you know, so, and, I, and normally I'm getting as feisty as the dog is right now we walk every day we did and now she's been down today is the second week now uh day 14 of her surgery and i put a coat on or i put shoes on they are all by my side they're all dying to go outside but she can't so the other dogs are suffering as a result of it and me too but i've got to get it healed before we're up here in a tent because once we're in a tent it's going to be impossible to keep that thing clean so really praying that scabs over soon that we can uh, get get her back out plus she's getting a duffer butt on her so um, Diana says great series of books you can take lots of notes from them very much so she's referring to Millie's books glad you could make it chat oh hope things are doing well good yes I'm glad you're here too send it to you it's it is the common rule okay so let me pop on here I did see a message come through from you Oh, okay, it's an audible. Awesome. That's good because I'm learning that as I'm rolling here, having an audiobook is so much better. The last three, four nights, I passed out when I laid flat and went to bed. I was just so tired. So it's like I love reading at night, but. And Millie's books are dangerous because I end up putting them down at like 11, 12, 1 o'clock. It's not good. They're very addicting. Um, tell us about the book, Chad. Let me see if it'll take me into it. Um, 
Okay, Kelly says, this year and next we are set for firewood. It's a great feeling. Absolutely, especially with what you experience, what a comfort to know that you've got that firewood. The common rule, okay, so the, ah, the common rule is by Justin Whitmull Early, and it says, habits of purpose for an age of distraction. Awesome. Same lines, yes. And you know what we need? We need to really get back to our roots. I can't tell you how much the mountain man and I are anxious and excited about being in our home. I secured some solar stuff this week. We have a 100 watt panel coming that's gonna power that little battery bank that was Austin's to keep my internet going and um, possibly power odds and ends, maybe recharge our equipment and my laptop. Um, I also, we had a 180 watt, I think it's 180 watt, 24 volt panel that Austin had bought for his camper and he mistakenly bought a 24 volt and wanted a 12. So we got all the 24 volt equipment. I got the charge controller and the cables to go with that. And that's gonna go with two uh, 12 volt batteries so that it's a 24 volt system. And that is going to power our, probably our lights and our water pump. And right now, as it stands, I don't have the water pump purchased. We may try to rework one of the old ones that failed and see if we can't rebuild that. Um, but if that's the case, we're going to work out of water jugs that have spigots. And our shower will be a, I think it's a, I don't remember how many gallons it is. But it's a, a bigger water, like rectangular water jug that has a spigot on it and he's going to build a shelf in the bathroom that'll be above the shower for us to take showers and we'll heat the water you know i'm i'm not worried about that stuff i do need to have a connection with the outside world because of my business and my clients and also austin but beyond that I'm telling you i will be thankful for the day when i can heap all of my equipment in the woods and just walk away i we were both born uh, over a hundred years too late. Uh, we just love the simplicity of a simple lifestyle. So living in this tent here, when we set it up, uh, will be such an awesome thing again. I, I have been craving it since we did it the first time for eight and a half months, and I'm so ready to do it again. You know, I do, you know, there is a lot to be said about technology as far as being able to research things on a, on the fly, you know, knowing how to do medical things, knowing more about herbals and medicinals, you know, researching how to fix an engine. You know, those things are priceless and it is really awesome to have that at our fingertips, but there's also the evil side to it, you know, and it it's a mixed bag of nuts, but when you can learn to control it and use it and, but also take care of yourself in the meantime, and we've talked about that over these last couple of years, you know, that has been my goal is to step back into the simple life, learn how to have limitations and self-monitor ourselves, you know. So it's an important thing that we need to do for ourselves, really, because technology in this age is creating a feeling of such stress and a rush society, and it's not healthy. It's not healthy at all. Hence, all the illness, disease, and all kinds of oddities that continue to pop up. Okay, so Miss Kelly is sharing that Mike's blood work on Monday was wonderful. His platelets are at 275 and the liver, kidney are very good as is the white blood count and hemoglobin. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So do they, re they really don't know yet what caused all that? Um, or was it just the blockage that set everything else just to sailing? But praise God, we've been praying for him daily and I'm so thankful to hear that. Um, Diana says such good news about Mike, praise God. And Shelly says, glad to hear that Mike is doing better. Those numbers do sound good. Yes, our guest arrived. Kelly asked if our guest arrived. Yes, he, we picked him up on Wednesday of last week. And he's such a joy to be around. He's so much fun. And he is a good asset. Um, he, um, we we'll call him Mountain Christopher. That's uh, Glenn's cousin, Christopher. Um, Christopher was here for the start of our cabin build previously on the guest cabin at the previous property. And his brother, Jonathan, lived with us for three or four years out here and helped us build the cabin also. Um, and these are 
some wholesome fellas, um, really, really good guys. And uh, Christopher has been doing construction now for the last four years, I believe. So it's really awesome. They were working yesterday, putting trim work up. So Glenn could just yell out the dimensions. Christopher was cutting it or they were both doing different areas at the same time. So the fact that he can be independent doing something one place and Glenn can be doing something somewhere else is really speeding things up. I don't have that knowledge, enough of that knowledge. I am, I'm just enough to be dangerous. So, um, there are certain aspects of construction that I'm, I'm better versed at, you know, I can spackle like a queen and, um, I can be a second set of hands, but uh, as far as, um, being an independent, depending what we're doing, you know, that's not always the case. Now, when it comes to building the cabin, that'll be a completely different ball game, but, um, and I'll be involved deeply into that specifically, but this stuff, so it's so great to have his hands. It's really making things go a lot faster. We will be heading into the kitchen and rejoin the kitchen down there and then the flooring and the stair treads and we should be good to go. So week and a half is what we're hoping for. They're starting to lay the flooring upstairs today. So, uh, and finishing the trim work. Um, let me see here. So yeah, so that's awesome having him here. And when he, we picked him up, we got to see Austin for a little bit and enjoyed dinner with Austin. So that was really nice. So, um, and then like, um, I mentioned it, but I don't know if you were present when I mentioned it. Austin will be coming home for the weekend. He's off on Monday. So he's going to come Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then go back for a day off on Monday. So that'll be nice to have him here. And we're going to hit the woods on Sunday, possibly Saturday afternoon too. Um, Chad says it's about building biblical habits and rhythms. Yep. Awesome. So is the book that I'm listening to. Um, I'm not sure if the fella that is, I have to think about it because he did say he's a writer, um, obviously, but I think he's also a pastor as well. And, uh, it's, it's good when you can incorporate the biblical side of those things into it and, and be able to also see how God designed us to really be. And that's what the book that I'm listening to is talking about. And it sounds like the same with Chad. So um, it's awesome when you can really regroup. You know, we, we get lost in our culture and lost in the day to day. My shoulder's getting really cooked on this side. Um, we really need to step back and really analyze. You know, God made us to be a certain way. And, and you know, it was, it was neat the way something else the guy talked about yesterday was, you know, they talked about Jesus having enough smarts to step away when there was a big crowd of people and being able to take care of himself and renew himself and knowing that that was a need. And then when, when the disciples would come to get him and find him and say, you know, the people are looking for you. And he would, he would say, well, let's go somewhere else. And, you know, it's because he, he fed them and now it's time to move on. And, you know, it's like the author said, when they moved on, you got to look at it as, as it wasn't something that they did fast. You know, they walked. So it was a three day walk to Galilee from where they were. And they were, um, enjoying the surroundings and it wasn't something you could rush and you would pause to get a drink and you would pause for the night and rest somewhere, you know, so it was a process. Not everything was rushed and maybe they were, you know, making time trying to get somewhere, but likely by the way, basis of the stories and, and the way Jesus rolled was taken in time so that they could renew and they could communicate on their travels and they could regroup. And, you know, we miss out on that so much. And that's why I am so very thankful for our Sundays. You know, Sundays were meant for a day of rest. And there is so much to be said about that. You know, we've been doing that for religiously for the last probably four years, if not longer, but most definitely the last four and we don't work at all on a Sunday. We just relax, uh, do church, whether it's out or our own or listening to something online and um, really regroup and renew ourselves. And it is, there is so much to that. And you know, most of society doesn't do that today. And I, there's a lot of importance behind that. 
guys are talking and I love it. I got to catch up. All right. Uh, Kelly says, yes, Diana, we are all praising God for his healing in Mike. Yes, most definitely. And Shelly says, when will you be setting up the tent? How long do you have at your old place? He is actually, he put stuff on a ferry on Monday. And his plan is to leave on the 8th, heading from there to here. So probably another five days after that, depending on his travels and how things go. But um, we are in agreement that if we are not completely finished, he is, um, will have access to his RV for accommodations. So um, it's going to depend. But um, one of the rooms that needs to be completely finished with trim and just paint is our bedroom. And when it comes time for that to be moved, we're just going to set up up here. Um, I don't want to move it multiple times. I don't like doing double work. That just drives me crazy. So um, we'll just pack up the bedroom, bring it up to the container, set up the tent. Um, Christopher can probably stay in the cabin at, at that point because we'll still be working down there most likely. And then we'll have a couple days up here. So it just depends how things roll. Possibly next week I'll be, we'll be in a tent. Um, which is perfectly okay with me. Um, and then, um, we'll be, it depends. It, it's kind of all dependent on how things go because when the kitchen gets tore up down there, I won't have the sink. I will still have the stove and the refrigerator, but I'll probably be using the tub to do dishes and, and to get my water, uh, for a little bit. Uh, because we're going to be doing a unique countertop down there. We're doing a concrete countertop, which is a three-day process for that alone. Um, so that will, you know, tie up the uh, water. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm perfectly okay just setting up the tent and calling it good up here and working, you know, working from up here while we're working down there. So we'll just have to see. But in the next week and a half, two weeks, we'll be definitely in a tent. So, um, and then starting up here. So really anxious though, really anxious to get going. Um, let me see here. Okay. Good morning, Deb. She says, good morning, ladies. Been on the phone trying to get my unemployment figured out with both my school district jobs and are pretty much non-existent. Oh, wow. So um, no more schooling up there. Are they doing everything online? And good morning, good morning also. Um, we'll look for that book, Chad. Kelly said he has, oh, he does have a rare form of leukemia. So they have established that then. Okay. And is it low grade? I imagine so, because of his platelets and everything being, and I did know that, I'm sorry. Um, and bear with me, if you guys are reaching out to me and I'm not responding, please forgive me and please forgive the brain because at this point there is so much swirling around inside this head that I'm surprised it is not bursting. Um, Deb says, we'll have to catch up on earlier chat later. Love being here live. Yes, glad to have you on here. Okay, so Kelly says, no cure, but very treatable and normal lifespan expected. Awesome. Okay, good deal. So we will continue to pray, though. God can heal anything. And I know you know that. Um, everyone read that book. So good. Praise the Lord for it. All right, awesome. We will definitely check it out. I will add that to my list. Um, Deb says, ladies and all, I guess I better not assume all ladies. Sorry. I'm sure Chad did not take offense. And... Um, I wish I wish Terry would get on here. Terry has mentioned he would try to join us, but um, I haven't caught up with him in a while. He was doing well with his cancer, um, so we'll have to I'll have to check in with him and give you guys an update. Um, Shelly said she'll be looking for that book to Chad. And let's see here. Glad Austin will get to spend time at home. Yes, I know. He's been really funny. I've been getting comments. I gotta, I'm like jacking my neck up here. I'm going to move this down a little bit. There we go. Um, he's been funny. Uh, the guys have been talking about
about what they're going to do for their break because they only school till November 27th and then they have a month between when the next term starts. So the question is always, when are you, what, what are you going to do over your break and are you going home? And Austin's comment is, I don't know what I'm doing yet because I don't know if I have a place to go. <laughs> well, by then I sure as heck hope he has a place to go, but he won't have a bedroom. That's the other thing. He will have a fold out love seat in the living room for his accommodations this year until we get the guest cabin built. So it's just kind of funny listening to him um, talk to the other guys or what they are sharing with me as far as, as that goes. But he has a place always. And yes, I'm extremely glad that he's coming home and he's doing really well. Um, he ended up um, pushing two courses into the next term. His terms will probably get spread out. Instead of it being a one year uh, educational um, Bible term, it's gonna be a two year because we've broken up the courses into four terms that are more bite sized for him and uh, enabling him to be more successful. And he is, since we did that, he is doing phenomenally. I'm really, really excited about that. So continue to keep him in your prayers. We have God for the abundance that he's going to provide for his tuition and his uh, uh, food and rent. So, um, and, and it's, it's progressively been provided. So God is good. We, we don't doubt that in any way, nor do we doubt the spring he's going to provide here on our homestead so that we don't have to dig a well. Um, yes, Kelly says, good to hear Austin will be home for a bit. I'm so excited to hear about how Austin is doing, Deb says, and... And yes, Chad says, you know I didn't. I know you didn't take offense. Absolutely not. Chad is a, another one of our huge prayer warriors, and we've been praying for him. Continue to keep him in your prayers. He is looking for the perfect home for uh, himself and his children. So um, definitely keep him in your prayers for that. One of the questions I didn't ask you today that is on the list is, what is your favorite kind of work? You know, a lot of people today, the younger generation, and not necessarily just the younger generation, but a lot of people view work in a negative fashion, where for us, work is very gratifying, very renewing, um, very rewarding, and we love doing physical labor because that is where we don't go to a gym, we go to our backyard. And that work feels so good when you're breaking a really good sweat and you're doing something and you s reap the rewards from that work. It's just so, there's so many facets to it. And a lot of people don't view work that way. And so I'm curious, I imagine you guys are probably on the same lines as we are, that you enjoy doing the different things that you do. I know that Chad uses his um, big equipment repair business um, to serve God and I know that he gets great pleasure out of his abilities there so you know I know a lot about each of you how you're in your gardens and enjoying being able to do that kind of work so I'm just curious what is your favorite kind of work I love gardening I love um, doing firewood and uh, I love doing my projects like my leather work and um, different tasks like that and I love being in my kitchen. I love, love, love feeding my crew. Um, the men have become guinea pigs again. I am working with different flowers. Um, oh, Shelly, I'm gonna have to send you a picture of a box. I got Jovial's gluten-free flour and I can't, it has teff flour, brown rice flour, sorghum flour if I recall correctly, but it's a good blend. And I used it to make pot pie last night and I made, it's bread flour, but I used it to also make a cake two days ago and zucchini and banana bread the day before that. And um, really nice flour and I really like it a lot. So I wanna share that with you. I don't know if you'll be able to have it cause I know you have additional food sensitivities, but it's a really nice flour. Um, by the way, guys, these copper vessels are a good investment. Um, any bacterial, any microbial, any viral, and um, adds the uh, essential copper that we need in our diet to our 
our bodies and uh, really pretty as well. Um, it's getting the patina on mine now. Glenn's has had a patina for a while. Mine is slow to get the patina on it, but um, you can go to uh, treyerwilderness.com slash copper h2o the link is down below um, if you're interested in these um, there's a lot of links in the description below two that i didn't mention so far um, that i wanted to mention is there if you have fibromyalgia or you know someone that has fibromyalgia that can be cured i had um symptoms of that and lupus and i have managed to combat most of that uh naturally uh both with retraining my brain and um just uh, in some of the things that i do so there is a fibromyalgia summit going on and you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash fibro summit link is down below and then there is also the natural medicine at home workshop and i know many of you will check that out it's a free uh summit type workshop and you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash natural medicine at home so check those out but also check out the links down below and if you are interested in taking control of your own health outside of our big pharma and big medicine um, you can do so by going to creatingbalancehealth.com and use coupon code treyer wilderness and you will receive a discount on anything that you purchase through them but they are a phenomenal way for us to take control of our health we've utilized those their services for both myself and austin really enjoy the, their services they're very thorough um, they also really care we're not a number we are we are a concern of theirs so definitely check that out and also um, if you have varying autoimmune diseases and struggles lots of pain um, consider checking out treyerwilderness.com slash retraining the brain because our bodies get in what is called a fight and flight loop and our body honestly gets confused at some of the triggers and f thinks it's in the fight and flight mode when you're actually healing and that is what I went through and as a result of doing the retraining the brain I eliminated a lot of pain and a lot of autoimmune um, tendencies and diseases that I had in my body so definitely check that out the link is down below and um, I really encourage you guys in addition to your preparations for your uh, self-sufficiency uh, to also consider your health and medicinal aspects into that. Sun is definitely moving. Parts of me are cooking here. I won't keep it too much longer. I have a couple things I want to share, but I want to read what you guys wrote here. Um, okay, so Kelly says, in regard to the question about your favorite kind of work, Work around the homestead and with the animals. We do things the old-fashioned way when most think we're crazy. Yes, ma'am, I'm right there with you. They think we're nuts too, but we just love it and it's a blessing. Agreed. Agreed. I love our traditional way of doing things. And it was really fun having Christopher come back out to hear the things that he remembered most. He enjoyed my sourdough um, foods that I was making and and some of the different things that we were doing um, at the time were all uh, a lot of it bushcraft stuff a lot of it uh, old school stuff and that is what we will be stepping back into as we get into our new house so stay tuned because our channel on YouTube is really going to take off with us being in the woods a lot more and really doing a lot of our old things that we have been and that's why we moved here. Sorry, I had to move it closer, but it's getting harder to see. Okay, so Miss Tammy says, I love work that involves more work like Kelly said, the old-fashioned way. I don't always do things that way, but I love it when I can. Yes, exactly. Well, so this is coming from the two women that cook on wood cook stoves. So, yes, exactly. Miss Diana says, building things. As soon as my shoulder will allow, I'll be helping Craig to build the chicken tractor. We're aiming to have it done by Monday. Awesome. Well, just take care of yourself because it's no good when you reactivate pain. It just continues. Um, Tammy says, Brandon and Benjamin are wearing... 
their amber. Awesome. Not sure if they are seeing benefits yet. Yeah, I love mine. I absolutely love mine, and I am so thankful for it and keeping my lymphatic system open. That is just huge. There's links for that as well. Um, TreyerWilderness.com slash Amber SOS, and if you use the coupon code TreyerWilderness, she will give you a nice discount and take good care of you. This is all homemade amber products, and they are fabulous for healing and, and less anxiety. Deb says, gardening, homesteading, nurturing animals, cutting, wood cutting, anything that is active and produces. Yes, ma'am. Cooking, preparing food, the food harvest. I like driving anything and anywhere. I have, oh, awesome. You have your CDL? You go, girl. Miss driving school bus trips. That's awesome. Now, did you have the CDL for the bus? Is that why you have it? But do you have all levels of the CDL that you could drive an 18-wheeler to? You go, girl. That's awesome. That is awesome. That also enables you to dive, drive dump trucks and, and stuff like that as well. I'm, I agree. I'm with her. I love, I love doing that. I did, a lot of, I did a lot of helping with the backhoe out here. Not the digging part, but transporting and moving things and, and stuff. Okay, Deb says, I'm looking forward to having my brother visit, help build my glass window greenhouse in October. Awesome. That's what we will have as well. We have a huge pile of windows that we will be utilizing for our greenhouse. So awesome. That'll be cool. You have to share pictures. Um, Diana says, I need to go. Love you all. Have a great week. You as well, sweet friend. Love you. We will be praying for your shoulder. Take care of yourself. Tammy says, Amber SOS is a great company for customer service. Yeah, she's a real doll. She's a really good lady. And gosh, I'm trying to think where she is from. I don't think it's Ireland. Is it the Netherlands, Tammy? She's in another country. Um, but I wanted to support her because she is just such a neat lady. And um, the Amber is just so beneficial. And this is the first company I've found that does Amber necklaces and bracelets for adults. Normally you find them for babies for teething. Ireland, thank you. Okay. Um, and and the, the trick with Amber is that it you have as much as you can get on the surface of your skin for it to be effective. And a lot of the companies put different wood beads and, and different things in so the amber is actually not ever touching your skin. So that's why her amber is so much more beneficial. Um, let me see here. Want to get time to edit videos that I have taken a few of to share on YouTube. Yes, you're going to need to do that because, uh, and I hear you. Oh my goodness. I've got so many photos that need to be edited and put up on our Instagram page. I'm so behind and I'm hoping that I get time to do that and, and the videos as well. I mean, I've been videotaping this whole process, but um, there are short bursts that I want to put into a video to show how we've worked over the land because that's basically what they are. That and moving our stuff and our shenanigans. And then once we start building, I will either be doing live videos or videos and then trying to place them together during the night and just get them uploaded um, so that uh, we're staying on top of things because the build is the most important part. Working the land is helpful too for people that uh, are unfamiliar, um, but the build is going to be the most important thing. Shelly says, my son is an electrician and he scored an old transformer framework that they are going to repurpose to make a greenhouse. Oh, that is fabulous. That is, I'll tell you what, when you can get your hands on stuff like that, you know, I told you before, some of you are my age and will recognize the term of Sanford and Son. That's what our yard or parts of our yard look like before. Now it's neatly stacked, but I'll never complain about that because the mountain man is gifted stuff and given stuff and find stuff all the time. And we end up repurposing it in such great ways. The other day they took a, he built the trailer for the sawmill and that used to be a horse trailer well the top of the horse trailer we were going to move up here and we just couldn't get it here and it's really kind of disheveled so he ha is going to take it apart but we used some of that frame the steel post to put the post on the weld the post onto my container for the internet the other day so having stuff around is never a burden it always ends up being useful awesome kelly said she'll be praying for diana's shoulder um let me see here tammy says very reasonable shipping i was surprised yeah considering it was coming from ireland and quick turnaround really quick turnaround she's super though i really enjoy working with her and she said you know that the you know advertising with different 
places has never really benefited her that word of mouth has always been the best and that's why I want to help her because honestly these are I am so pleased with these so so pleased with these and how they work like I said I instantly notice relief and and right now with everything going on you know as much as I am trying to keep my my surroundings a stress free environment it's darn near impossible. The pace and just everything going on, regardless if it's not necessarily a bad stress, it's just that it's that, that things are ugly. It's that it's a stress that it's just constant. You know, so being able to de-stress ourselves in whatever way we can, this is a great de-stressor and anxiety remover. And I just, I, I also like the way it looks. And I know that's what attracted Benjamin and, and uh, Brandon to it. So, okay, whoa, I'm spinning too fast here. Okay, Chad says, miss cutting wood and having wood heat and cooking. Yes, you'll get there. It's coming back. It's all coming back because God is going to bless your socks off. I know it. Kel uh, Kelly says, wow, Shelly, that is so great. What a, a neat repurpose for them. Deb says, I had class A license most of my life until it went federal 20 years ago. I do have passenger bus hazmat and tanker now <laughs> i'm capable of driving an 18 wheeler reinstate a feel of worth at 61 now you go girl yeah and you know what all those skills can be so useful even you know crazy as it may sound if things were to fall apart a lot of the old equipment you know say we had an emp a lot of the old equipment could still very well work and there'd be gas but nothing to use, use it in on, on our modern day vehicles. However, with all that old equipment, the old tractors, the old uh, anything, you'd have the skill to utilize it and that is huge. That is so huge. I'm telling you, whatever you can put in those knowledge banks and whatever you can put, you know, under your belt as a skill is so powerful because it can be bartered, it can be shared, it can be used, and that is just awesome. And I totally get what you're saying. I just, I feel my worth returning just in that I'm getting my strength back and I'm able to do these things that I once prided myself of being able to do. You know, it's just, and sometimes God strips us of those things and there's reason behind that because he uses us where we are. But it's also a really good feeling when you, when you are able to return to that place. So I totally get that. All right, so let me see here. Shelly says their goal on their acreage is to be self-sufficient and they have a small creek going through and they are thinking micro hydro. Awesome. I was just, that's exactly what popped in my head when you said they had it. Taking ashwagandha helps with stress rhythms in the body. I have lavender and ashwagandha tea and chamomile tea all in one that I've been drinking every evening. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's why I said when you learn your herbals, it can be such a benefit to you because we also put on some new stuff on copper today that has comfrey, cayenne. I also added plantain to that. There's some others in there, but uh, trying to add another edge for healing on this thing because it is just wide open. And Tammy shared um, how they used an onion on one of their chickens, just a sliver of onion to help heal an open wound. So there's so much around us and just having that knowledge is so priceless regardless if it's for ourselves, our animals, whatever the case may be. Oh, and Shelly said she's taking that also. Yep. Um, Kelly says, yes, we might have to use our 1952 Farmall M tractor to travel if there was an EMP. Exactly. But you have, and you know, and that's just having these things, knowing these things, stocking up on extra fuel, you know, it's all such important, important stuff. And even like with Chad, you know, he misses those things, but plan ahead because those things are going to come back and they're coming to you and God is going to hook us all up because we are seeking him for it. Awesome. Kelly said that that ashwagandha has helped her greatly. And Shelly said her too. Deb says it's a pleasure to get into an older 
manual rig and be able to handle it. So many young folks don't have a clue how to drive older useful rigs. Very true. A lot of kids don't know how to use even just a manual transmission, you know. It's really important. Uh, I was so grateful, you know, that we were able to get Austin the dirt bike and teach him that skill. Um, for autism, it's really hard to do multiple things at one time successfully. Um, so having to shift and drive and steer and brake um, was a bit of a challenge, but he, he took it on. And you know what? I was thinking about it the other day. That was just one more step and stage towards him learning how to fly. The more we get under our belt and learn, sometimes um, it's a prerequisite to additional skills that are coming later. So learning these things are just so priceless. And I totally hear you, Deb. That's so awesome. Okay, she said, yes, good ingredients and yummy stuff. Yes, calendula, yes, is also really good. Yes, and zinc. Um, when I was in my early 20s, I had a grease fire at my stove, and I couldn't get it out. And the back door was right there, and I didn't want to catch a house on fire, so I just grabbed the cast iron skillet and ran out the back door and tossed it in the yard. But And I know it was a dumb thing to do, but at the same time, I had young babies, and I didn't want the house to catch fire. So... I got burns here on this part of my hand because of the fire blowing back as I was moving forward. And I actually had third degree burns there. And I used a zinc salve and I don't, there is no scar on my hand there at all. It's a, it was amazing. So zinc, and the zinc had the calendula in it. Um, yes, those herbs are so, so good. And calendula smells so good. I love that smell. I so love that smell. Um, Mike looked high and low to find a truck with 4x4 four four and stick shift. Yeah, you know, it's so hard. Uh, it, it's harder to find. And we want to get an older Ford four-door with a manual and, and diesel. And that could be a trick to find because the one, the people that do own them are not uh, relinquishing them in the least. You know what? i got to move. I'm going to read something to you then and jump off of here. But I am, I am cooking. So give me a second here while I just adjust and relocate my chair and myself into the shade a little bit more. Just to try to get myself out of the sun because I've got layers on because it was cooler this morning. That might help a little bit. Anyway. And I can also see to read to you because <laughs> it's bright out here. Oh, I'm ready for our change in season. You know, the sun can be out, but it can still be nice and cool, and you can wear flannel and be cozy. That's that's my time of year. All right, I want to read something to you because this goes along with the work and the thoughts behind work. And, you know, teaching these young kids good work ethics and understanding that a job that makes you sweaty and nasty can sometimes be one of the most rewarding things on the planet. But, you know, kids look at things so different today. And... And want stuff for nothing. And, you know, I think that because of my makeup and because of what I learned growing up, that I enjoy so much more reaping the harvest from my, my hard work. It just feels so much greater. Um, and until you do that, you don't realize it, you know. But the younger generation, you know, some of them are really eager. Like Christopher is just so eager to learn and know things. And Austin, too. Um, but... You know, you have so many out there that are glued to their machines and to different aspects of life. And I really worry about that generation in the regard to if things do continue to worsen over this year, you know, what that will look like and, and how people will cope. Because learning how to do things for yourself is going to be really important. And that's going to start with just learning to cook their own meals and not uh, purchase them in a box, you know. So, I don't know, um, but that's why I wanted to touch on this today. Also, because I knew many of you would feel the same way that I do about work and the gratification that comes behind it. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to live like we do and live traditionally and do traditional skills and homesteady skills. Um, you know, even just living simply and cooking your own meals and, and being able to make your own soup and to have your house smelling amazing and it didn't come out of a box and just knowing how to do that and knowing what things to purchase which just reminds me did not get you guys my food list okay i'm going to try to do that <laughs> if i don't get it to you now 
I will get it to you once I am under roof. And um, feel free to remind me. Okay, so let me see here. Oh, let me just see here. Uh, well, I'm going to jump backwards. I just saw Chad's first. He says, please pray for me. Not a good day for me. You can count on that, Chad. We will all lift you very heavily today and keep you in our prayers. Um, you are in our daily prayers anyway, but I will definitely uh, pray more for you. Um, Deb says, I bet once Austin gets it and things figured out, it sticks with him forever, especially if he is passionate about it. Yeah, I agree. And that's, that's how he is. And um, when he's passionate about something, it's just like no holes barred. And that's, and that's where he's at now. So I'm so proud of him and so excited for him. Um, totally agree with you Tammy about work and pleasure while doing it yes yes and I see that everybody is offering their prayers to Chad which I knew was coming I love you all you guys are so good to one another Deb I says I have to keep convincing my son I enjoy all of this work on my homestead just not enough hours to sleep after all gets done yeah I know well and you know one thing I learned is that you know what sometimes you just need to pause and take care of yourself and continue the next day because it does get done I know that there's deadlines and I know sometimes it's hard to decide what to do first because it's all pressing but I've learned through my process that when I take care of myself, God helps me take care of the rest. So keep that in mind. Don't kill yourself, sister. Um, nice. Sammy says, pray extra for you today, Chad. Shelly says, I am really looking forward to your food list so I can figure out what I may want to have in mind. I, and, and Deb says, praying right now, Chad, for you and for your comfort. Awesome. You guys are awesome. I love you all so much. Thank you for taking care of each other. Um, I'm moving this again because it's getting really hot. Okay. Um, yes. So I will do my best to try. I've got two articles I got to get in and I got to get Austin's website live. I've got it live, but I don't have the aspect live that's going to help Austin with his funding and, I, and to help these other kids get on board. So I've got, pray for me that I can be really productive and really focused and get that live for him. I've got to get that out there. So that's on today's list and tomorrow and Friday. And then next week I'm um, helping the guys with the kitchen. So Deb says, exactly, prioritize is the hardest at times, especially by myself. Yes, I understand that. So understand that because... You know, sometimes in the morning when I go to look at my list, everything is equally pressing and has to get done. But, you know, I've, I've, I, I have to say it again. God has shown me over and over again that when I just lean on him and allow him to guide, what needs to get done gets done and the rest gets done later. So, and, and there's never been any harm or foul in it. You know, he works it all out. So when we put everything at his feet, when it's like that, um, it's amazing to watch how everything transpires. So, and it's hard. It's hard to do that because, you know, when we look at the big picture ourselves and see everything in the overabundance and the overwhelm, um, it's, it's hard to, to do on our own. That's why we have to add his supernatural. So Shelly, I will work on that. I want to read this guys to you because this is just so good. Um, it was a really unique read. Okay, so it is Proverbs 14.23. Hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. One day a grandfather told his grandchildren the story of how he came to America. He told about the trains and the ship that brought him from his home in Eastern Europe. He told of being processed along with other immigrants at Ellis Island and how he'd gone to a cafeteria in Lower Manhattan to get something to eat. He sat down at an empty table and waited a long time for someone to take his order, but nobody came. Finally, a woman with a tray full of food sat down opposite him and explained how a cafeteria works. You start at the end, she said, pointing toward a stack of trays. Then you go along the food line and pick out what you want. At the other end, they'll tell you how much you have to pay. The grandfather reflected for a moment and said, I soon learned that's how everything works in this country. Life is a cafeteria here. You can get anything you want, even very great success, if you're willing to pay the price. But you'll never get what you want if you wait for someone to bring it to you. You have to get up and get it yourself. The difference between where you are right now and where you want to be can be summed up in two words. Hard work. 
Does God want me to succeed, you ask? Yes, but he won't drop success into your lap. He promised to bless all the work of your hands. That's in Deuteronomy 28, 12. Countless hours, persistent effort, and constant improvement make the difference between ambition and success, as well as perseverance and trust. We need to trust in him. So I knew you guys would appreciate that. That really is what triggered today's talk. Um, but the thing is, you know, it's easy today in our situation. You know, um, there's different groups of people. There's the group of people that are now unemployed and very content being in that place and don't make any effort to be in a different place. And it's hard right now. There's not, you know, the, there is work. Like Amazon is hiring left and right because everybody's shopping. Um, and then there's, there's, so there's those people that just are, are waiting for ch things to come to them. Then you have those that are on unemployment that are seeking, or maybe even at this point being adventurous and wanting to step out and do the thing they've always wanted to do, but have been afraid to do it. That, that stepping out of the comfort zone is the hardest part for many people. And I promise you, once you learn to start stepping out of your comfort zone, it becomes a natural habit and a joy to do so. And um, the mountain boy is learning that. Um, I don't know if I shared, did I share the story about going, the mountain boy going to the beach, having the, the chance to go to the lake last week? Tell me if I did, because if not, I'm gonna share that story. Or maybe actually, since he's coming, maybe I'll let him share that story. I'll see, I'll wait till next week to share that story. Okay, awesome. Hello, Ellie Thorne. I see everybody welcoming you and I just scrolled up. Welcome, I'm so glad to have you. She says, hi everyone, I live in California. This lifestyle is far from what I live, but it is my dream. I learn much from these videos. I first found this channel when researching explantation of my breast implants. Awesome. Well, I am so glad to have you, and I hope that you are on the healing side. And um, stay tuned. I have some really good, a good series coming out on that as well on what I've learned in my healing. But I am so glad to hear that you've joined and that you've jumped in and said hello because... Um, we love getting to know new people and, uh, we have an amazing community of loving people here and amazing people here. So welcome. And I hope you join us more often on the live if you're able, um, as you can see, everybody has welcomed you. Um, and if it's a dream, the last sentiments I just said is that a lot of people are afraid to step out of their comfort zone and step into something. And, um, I want to encourage you to embrace that dream right now because now more than ever, it's a, a lifestyle that is going to carry us through and, and help us. And um, as far as my healing goes, I couldn't have been in a better place. Um, not having the EMFs from uh, all the electric and because we live off grid and living as healthy and naturally and uh, being really aware of what we eat and that and eating so wholesome has really, really helped me as well as in the beginning of this. I don't know if you're on during the beginning, but being out here is very renewing to me. I am an outdoor girl. I've always said I need an IV to the outdoors and I also need sunshine. I am very solar powered like my house. So being out here today is very renewing to me and very healing and very healthy. And I spent four years walking uh, five miles every day um, in this setting. So um, it's really, really healthy. And I'm just so glad you jumped on and said something. So I hope you'll join us more, Ellie. Uh, let me see. Deb says, praying for you, Tammy. You are amazing. God is with you. You're in his grip with all you are sh sharing with others. Well, I appreciate that. I'm just his vessel. I give him all the glory. And Chad says, thank you very much, everyone. You can count on everybody's prayers, Chad. And Ellie, we'll be lifting you too, because I know what kind of a healing journey you've been on. And um, I know that it can be a challenge at times. All right, let me see here. Uh, Shelly, you said no, and I'm not sure what you said no to. Can you expand on that? And maybe you were answering somebody else. Um, Kelly says, the first step out of your comfort zone is the toughest but always rewarding in our case. Yes, 
Always, always, always. I think Deb and Shelly are chatting, so I'll see if that transforms into something. I can't always see all the the um, comments. Okay, Ellie says, explanted two years ago now. Gosh, time flies. Same doctor that did yours. Awesome, awesome. Um, how are you in your healing? Are you feeling like you've conquered it, or are you still combating um, some of the oddities that come along with it? I still have struggles. Like yesterday, going to town, when I go to town, the EMFs and the toxins and the people and all of that just over, it just becomes overwhelming to my system. So I just get exhausted. Uh, and occasionally I still have other struggles, but it's pretty rare. Um, if I tax myself, um, I do end up with muscle issues because the silicone is still trying to come out of my muscles. So it's pretty interesting. I have lupus also, so I'm not sure I've seen a direct correlation. Lupus, I actually had symptoms of lupus as well and still do on occasion, um, but I think it is a result of all of the silicone that is still in my system. It uh, held in the fat and in the muscle. So as I've been working here, I've been really excreting it a lot, um, which is good. It's getting out of my system. But um, Email me, Ellie. I would love to chat with you. Email me at healing at treyerwilderness.com because there's a couple things that I can share with you to help you along your healing journey and also to eliminate um, the pain you get from the lupus. Down below, there is a link for the melt method. Check that out, but email me. I would love to chat with you because I've learned so much through this healing process and I would love to pass that on to you because I'm two years ahead of you. I explained it four years ago. So um, I would love to share my knowledge with you. So email me if you can. Um, let me see here. Deb says, I've never applied or received unemployment until now and have been encouraged to, to stay with my insurance and benefits. It's hard place to be. I've never taken handouts, only sharing blessings. Yeah, you know, um, and I thought of that when I said that uh, because I figured that may be the case. Um, and it is, it is a hard place to be when you are suddenly on the receiving end of things. And it is difficult. But in your case, that is essential because it's holding your place for that job. So, you know, and that's what it is there for. But there are people that abuse it. I mean, where we came from, there were four or five generations of people that just never worked and just, you know, mooched off the system. There are those people. And then there are the people that it's there for, you know, so it's a tough thing because none of us want to go that route. Um, but when you're, when you're in a situation where you're forced to, that's what those services are there for. So, you know, we can't feel bad for being in that place, although we do anyway, because it's just our makeup. I know what you're saying, Deb, but that's what those services are there for. And that's going to hold your job and keep you going. And being a single parent, you know, um, it's also there for you in that regard. So um, with Austin, there was a time I did have to tap into some of those services. And what's funny is when we went six and a half months without an income, we did not qualify for anything because we had too many vehicles on the property. Only one that was functioning and one that was running, but because they were on our property and they were titled and we owned them, it was considered uh, part of our, uh, I'm not thinking of the right word at the moment. Um, no, it just came and went. But we, own, we, we own too much. Ah, thank you, yes, thank you. Kelly gleamed it out at me, thank you. Yes, assets. So we didn't qualify. And, and they were all pieces of junk, but we won't lie, you know, so we put all of that stuff down. And of course, you know, we didn't qualify where if we would have had those vehicles and we, uh, and that was the other thing, they were all paid for. That was the other thing. That was why, because they were all paid for. They, they, I asked the lady and, and asked, you know, what would, have, what, if, what needed to change in order for us to qualify. And she said that if we had loans on all of those, that we would have qualified. So they want us in this extreme place of debt. It's so backwards. It really is so backwards. So anyway, I'm not going to continue on that one because that'll, I, I, I get on a tangent on that one. So I'm going to leave it go. But Deb, 
you're entitled, girlfriend. You're entitled, and you are not the kind of person that's sitting there on it because you're mooching. It's because of your situation and circumstances. And girl, you work harder than most people I know. You and Kelly and Tammy. Oh my goodness, you girls are crazy. So, um, Ellie says, thanks so much for sharing your experience. I will email you praying for y'all's day. I love Jesus too. Awesome. Good for you. And yes, thank you for emailing. I'd love to stay in touch with, um, would love to stay in touch with you and share what I know because there are some things that uh, transpired in my healing that will push you way ahead. So, and also remove the pain you're getting from lupus, which is huge because I know how debilitating that is. So, um, Yes, email me. And I'm glad you joined us today. And I'm glad you love Jesus because that is huge. All right. Miss Kelly says, praying for continued healing for you, Ellie. Tammy is an amazing lady and she will help you in your healing journey. Huh? Awesome. Thank you so much. I give God all the glory. You know what? I truly believe God used me as a vessel to he help people with that. And just in our lifestyle, I, I, like I told you guys before, I never intended to ever be on video, let alone live video. And, you know, God has purpose in everything. God works us through things and leads us to things and shows us what our purpose is on this planet. And I now know what mine is. So Deb says, yes, that is very sad how those folks know the system and can get away with it and will come, it will come down someday. Yes, it will. And there's so many that are working it. You know, um, I know I, I, I've met people that work it and, and it's just crazy, you know, but for us, you know, it's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to get it, you know, and, and God carried us through. God showed us, you know, that he would take care of us anyway. So, but it was just sad to see how backwards the system is and to know that there are people out there that don't live like we do that are in need and needed it and can't get it. You know, that's the part that's so frustrating to me is the people that do need it aren't getting it, and the people that don't need it have it. You know, it's just backwards. Yeah, that's what Kelly said. Yes, very backwards. Yeah, so like I said, don't get me started on that one. There's so much. That's why I said earlier, don't depend on the systems that are in place right now because they are failing, they are corrupt, they are backwards, and, and by the time we need them, like Social Security, I truly believe that when it comes time for us to tap into Social Security, there isn't going to be any anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. When we learn to live off of the land, learn to live from our strength and our physical abilities, and keep our physical abilities going strong into our older years, we are benefiting ourselves and we'll have longevity and we'll have better health and healing. And because of the knowledge that we seek, we know how to care for ourselves with such things as ashwagandha and raspberry, red raspberry leaf tea and all those good things. You know, there's so much out there. And when you learn how to utilize it, you know, we're benefiting ourselves and healing ourselves and growing. So there's much to be said about a traditional and simple lifestyle. Like I said, you don't have to live as traditionally as we do, but when you live simp simply, um, avoiding a lot of the toxicity in our world, um, you really do benefit from it. Really, really do, especially in healing. Um, Shelly says, I have had to use unemployment a few times in my life, but I work the rest of the time. It is... It is there for us, but it is hard to get it sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know what? You shouldn't be ashamed that you had, like nobody should ever be ashamed that we had to use it because, you know, it's funny. It's just our instinct because we're so used to doing um, so much and, and things. Hang on one second. Ellie, I saw your email come through. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm dying here. Wow, is my bag hot. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm zoning here. I need to plug in my phone. It's dying. But my internet is still up. I'm anxious to see how much it used on that little battery bank. If it didn't use much, that little machine will give me internet all day long and all through the night. So that is just so exciting and I don't have to spend any money to make it happen. Here we go. Okay. And my panel was only $103. So that's good. Whew. I'm cooking. Okay. I don't remember what I was saying now. Oh, you know... Um, when we have to use those services because we are so, we pride ourselves in being independent. And we do that sometimes from God too. So that's something that is worthy of mentioning is that, you know, we pride ourselves in being independent and we don't let God reign sometimes when we need him to. You know, we take that joy away from him and letting us, letting him bless us. 
in ways. And then also when we have to tap into things like unemployment and the varying services, um, you know, we, we feel lesser because of it, because we strive to be independent and, and not have to use those services. But it, it's like Shelly said, and I've said, you know, that's what they're there for. That's what they are there for. And when we use them because we have to and then move on, you know, not manipulating the system and different things, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it is our, because the majority of people on this planet are givers instead of takers, or givers instead of receivers, I shouldn't say takers. Um, you know, we're not used to, we, we like to give, we like to gift, we like to help. So when we are on the receiving end of that, it feels so weird and it's a shame that it feels that way. But we got to learn that when we don't accept gifts and we don't receive well, we are hurting the gift, the giver. Um, whether by our sediments or not being willing to accept it or um, acting silly when we are being gifted. So it's, it is a learned skill. It is a learned lesson. And the mountain man and I had to work very hard at learning, you know, um, he mentioned it the other day. So I'll, I'll uh, he was telling Christopher about it. Um, you know, we were tremendously blessed. So in so many ways by uh, people th and, and events and different things through my healing process. And one of the things that happened is I went, we went to the PO box one day and there was a a manila envelope in the mailbox it wasn't stamped it was lovingly placed in there um and when we opened it up it said that this is because we love you i have no idea who it came from but there was twelve hundred dollars in there and you know of course you know those are the moments where you just sit there and bawl your eyes out uh, happy tears but you know it's a hard thing to receive but um we really do truly need to learn to do that because, you know, God is telling us to love, so we are loving, but that's someone else loving us back, you know? So anyway, so don't feel bad for being on unemployment and utilizing the services. Cause right now, my goodness, like Deb said, you have to, to secure your jobs and to hold your jobs and to hold your placements and, and everything. And it, and you need to survive. This is a tough, tough, time i mean we've been very blessed through this that through the sale of our home that because otherwise we would have been we would have been hurting also um we didn't have a lot of needs uh because of how we live but we did need to get our building supplies and things but you know you still need to get by you still need fuel you still need food you still need you know to exist you have medical needs you know life goes on unfortunately this pandemic has been such a mess and has really caused a lot of problems as we all know but we're going to get through it we're going to see the other side and god is going to bless us and take care of us because we are seeking him so let me see here um i am working at simplifying my life also i will never be able to be living off grid like you but i am working on getting rid of things that complicate our lives cable was cut years ago yep yeah we haven't had that in forever and i don't miss it 12 12 years we've been without t cable and I do not miss it not one bit had that happen on several occasions several were God led according to the people who helped yeah isn't that awesome so awesome and you know God leads us to help others and God leads others to help us and we just need to be gracious and and learn to receive well and give well because we are called to love and give so you know, it's just, it's just awesome. It is, you know, it's awesome how things transpire and how things work. But, um, and Deb, I'm sorry, I didn't certainly mean to make you feel bad, but I'm glad you brought it up because it is something that needed to be talked about because there's other people out there that are right now on unemployment and feeling the same exact way, you know. Sorry, I'm real in tune with my surroundings and being my big girl isn't here to watch my back. I heard a four-wheeler in the woods there, so just wanted to pay attention a little. But anyway, uh, I've kept you guys on here long, but um, it was a good conversation today. We had new people come on and I'm just so thrilled and I'm so thrilled. You know, there's a lot of people out there watching this and I want to encourage you, even if you're watching the replay, to join in in, in the conversation because 
once we comment, once people comment on things, and you can see the live chat um, on the on these videos as well as the regular comments. Comment, join in, communicate with the other people because they can still see it once you do so on the replay and comment on the replay. And we, we are watching our comments as well and, and responding. So chime in, join in, be part of the community because we love you all, regardless if you're here on the live or joining in later. And if you're, if you're out there and you're watching and you know, you're secretly watching because you know, it's not your personality to be involved and be a part of things, just know you're loved. We love you all. And, and, and it's just so nice to have new people joining in and joining us and communicating with us because over the last four years that I've been doing this, we've really been blessed by such an amazing community. You know, there's a lot of haters on YouTube. There's a lot of haters in this world. And, you know, we've been blessed and fortunate that we've had very few trolls come in here and, and God is definitely driving this. So um, I just feel very grateful, very, very, very grateful and thankful that we have new people ch jumping in. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Deb says, been blessed for years from godly families, getting my son and myself through our lives the last 15 years after being widowed. Yeah, it's awesome. And you know, um, God's people take care of their people. You know, when we, when we really read the Bible and pay attention to what we are asked to do and we follow it, um, it's an amazing thing. You know, you've heard me talk before about the um, guidelines the Bible places for a marriage and how the man is supposed to be the head of the family and lead the family and so much in today's society not just with that particular thing but with much of what's in the Bible we pick and choose what we want to follow but when we follow his word to the T and really make an effort to walk the walk and talk the talk when an example and the reason I brought it up is with marriage when the man is running the house and we are the help meet and we are not a doormat or a heel, that we are an equal and we are working together as a team. There is so much to be said about the dynamics. Those dynamics are huge. And I've, I've lived both of those and I was a heel. And I know that uh, there's a lot of people that get up in arms about um, God's particular choice of wording and, and especially when it comes to marriage and when it says submit because there are a lot of independent women that get very upset by that but when you are walking out God's word as it is meant to be walked out you are still the strong independent person you are just supporting somebody in your life who has been given the job and the placement to be the head of the family to be the prayerful godly head of the family so it goes with everything else in the bible when we read it and we take it for what it is in the context that it was meant so often that's another problem that happens is that the context is taken out of it's taken out of context and therefore twisted um but when we when we follow god's leading in all aspects of our life, it becomes so wholesome. That's why I do these every Wednesday because I have learned over the four years because of my extremely strong walk with God, how beautiful life can be. And you shouldn't have to wait till you're in your 40s to learn that. It should be something that is explained and given to us in a, at a very young age so that we know the beauty that we could have in life and that's why I share what I share so the key thing is always delving in and digging into God's Word because that's where the truths are and God will lead you through the Bible and show you things that you need to see when you need to see them and it is so stinking amazing and I know many of you can relate to that you know when we take time to be in these environments and you can hear his still small voice you know when we are rushing through life at the pace that society has created, you don't hear any of that. But when you step away and take the time and you build that relationship with God, he does communicate with you and in varying ways. And it's amazing. And you, you gain so much. And the closeness and that relationship and that walk just becomes so amazing. So when you pull yourself away, as I was talking about in the beginning, and just 
renewing yourself. You're renewing that relationship with God too. And it's just, it's a priceless and very powerful place to be. And he will support you and take care of you, whether it's um, independently or through others. And when you see those gifts, it's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. We are called to tithe. And the way we view tithing in our life and our family is that that doesn't always directly mean the church. God has called it upon us to gift individuals that are in need. That is part of the church. It's just like taking care of the widows and the orphans. You know, we are called to love and help our brothers and sisters, and that is part of the church. You know, the church isn't a structure necessarily. It's it's, it's the body. And, and so, you know, we tithe regularly, even when we don't have anything. And by doing so, um, God has blessed us richly. And I'm not saying that we tithe to be blessed. I'm saying we tithe as a blessing. It is a good feeling. It is a, it is a good feeling to follow what we are called to do. And, and when you step outside of the building and you start focusing on what God is calling you to do, um, sometimes they'll call you to do things that are really unusual and very uncomfortable. Talk about stepping out of your comfort zone. But that's one of the best ways to do it. And uh, I just want to encourage you guys to seek him because with all this chaos that we are walking out, the best place you can find renewal is in him. And he is in my surroundings here completely. I mean, I feel his presence daily and I seek him daily and not just at one point in my day. It's like a constant. So, you know, the more and the, the more you seek him, the deeper your relationship will come become and the deeper it becomes the more amazing your life will be. I promise you. I promise you. I'm talking out of experience. So anyway, I don't even know how I got on that, but God must have needed me to say those words. So that is part of today's thing. And I saw Chad in there. Thank you. And and Ellie with an amen. Yes. So um, Dev says, I am blessed to share with others my garden harvest. Oh, for sure. That is like always such an amazing blessing to receive other because I know how much we know how much work goes into that. So it's an awesome blessing. It's twofold because it's something that you worked very hard to grow and attain and then to be gifted by it. And then also to have the, just the freshness and the nutrients. Mm. I got watermelon and cantaloupe the other day that were so good. And I just felt so blessed by it, by having those. And I can't wait to have stuff in my garden and my greenhouse. That is one of the next purchases we want to make is to try to purchase the roofing for our greenhouse so that when we are under roof, if we have a mild winter, we can get our greenhouse in place because we really feel the need to do that but guys I love you all so much I'm gonna let you get back to your day and I got to go get back to packing and stuff but Ellie it was a pleasure having you join us I hope you join us more often you are a perfect fit with this crew and uh, they will wrap their loving arms around you I know they will be praying for you Chad we will be praying for you and uh, Kelly we are praying for Mike and Honestly, we pray for all of you because we all have needs. We all have unspoken prayers. We all have unusual days and events that are taking place and the oddities around us and, and everything with the stuff going on. So um, just know that you are all prayed for on a daily basis. But I'm going to say a quick prayer here. Papa, I just thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you that I'm able to be out here breathing in your fresh air and just being in the sun and just surrounded by such amazing, loving people. And just thank you for blessing us with Mabel and Ellie today that they could join in with us and uh, be a part of our community. And uh, just continue to stir those on the outskirts that are watching and and those that are watching the replay and just help them to feel confident and comfortable in our community to communicate with us and share their prayer needs and share their lives and their stories and, and everything with us. It's just so nice when you can be together and, and share and, and feel a part of each other, even though with life the way it is. And it's so hard to find a good community of people that you feel comfortable in this day and age. There's just always unusual works and things that occur so it's nice when you can have a community and a safe place a safe haven to come to and commune and fellowship with others and I just thank you for providing this place thank you that I could use that little power pack today to have internet here that we could be outside thank you for how you are helping us progress in our home 
each day and, and get that finished so that we can start building our home and sharing that with others. Thank you for what you're gonna do in Chad's day today. Thank you for giving him comfort and peace and wrapping your loving arms around him and just uh, helping the enemy to loosen his grip and to leave and to just give him peace and comfort and to just give him glimpses of his future so that he has that great hope and peace that you are going to provide because we know you're gonna provide for him greatly and we know that you love him. I also ask that you be with Ellie and just wrap your loving arms around her and her healing and just remove the lupus from her body and give her uh, good healing and give her her life back because I know that uh, she has been struggling. I know what it's been like and I know how terrible it can be. And just thank you for giving her the voice today to join us. And I also ask that you wrap your loving arms around Mabel and just help her in the place that she's in. Help her to feel comfortable and confident in you. Help her to learn new skills that she can do where she's at. Help her to grow some microgreens and to maybe learn some skills that she can uh, utilize and and feel uh, just your strength and your your uh, rejuvenation in her life. As Deb said, it just feels so good to be empowered and we all need that in such a big way. And, and there's so many different ways we can each receive that and mainly that empowerment is coming from you. So I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around this community and just empower them today. Empower them with your love and your mercy and your grace, your spirit and just uh, let them feel you, let them feel uh, empowered in themselves and to uh, learn new skills and to maybe uh, start utilizing some old, but just be with them and uh, help them throughout their day. And I just thank you for what you're gonna do in each of our lives. Thank you for blessing Mike and uh, Courtney in their healing process and in their journey and giving Kelly the strength to uh, caretake for both of them. And just be with them and love on them. And uh, thank you for letting them be a light with all that they've accomplished on their homestead this year, even through the adversity. And that's the thing. We need to learn to pull into you in our all the time. But through the adversity and the hard times when we continue to persevere and trust in you, we make it to the other side and it's always better and brighter and more beautiful. And we know that you will take care of us. So I just... Thank you for what you're doing in each of our lives. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for uh, giving us something to hang on to and knowing that we have eternal life through you. And thank you for it being so easy that all we have to do is just ask you to be a part of our lives and to trust you and ask for forgiveness of our sins. So we just love you and thank you for what you're going to do and continue to grow this community. And thank you for all that you are doing Thank you for the many blessings that you put upon all of us. We love you and ask all this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Ooh, I was going to say, I thought I lost you. I had my eyes closed for too long and the screen looked black. <laughs> I cannot see. It's so bright and it's probably getting very hot. Okay, let me see here. What do we got? Um, Deb says... When I get your direction, we need to meet up. I have a box full of God's goods for you and your family. Oh, that'd be so awesome. That'd be so awesome. And yes, I am totally game. Um, Kelly says, amen. Enjoyed the live. Glad I made it. Take care of everyone. And we'll be praying for each of you this week. I'm really glad you made it too. I miss you. <laughs> and your, your, your uh, offer is greatly appreciated. And we would love that. Uh, Miss Kelly lives... Oh, Oh, is it eight or 12 hours? I can't remember. But Miss Kelly has offered to come for a weekend and lend a hand. And I just want you to know that if that works out for you, we are totally game and would love to have you here. Courtney says, amen. Have a great day. Hugs. Love to you all. Love you too, girly. I have to catch up with you. We haven't chatted in a while. Deb says, beautiful prayer. Amen, Papa. Thanks, Tammy, and all your blessings. Thank you all very much for being here. Kelly says, miss you all too. We'll try to get there and we'll be in touch. Awesome. And you know, if it doesn't work out, we totally understand. Life is crazy, but it, it, I just want you to know that the offer was such a blessing to us. And we are so excited. I'm just so excited to get ourselves in the tent and just to 
really, honestly, that our first homestead was such a labor of love, but at this point, it'll be so nice to sever the ties and just be free of it and be able to be here and just feel like we're starting and well, we are, but to feel, just feel total renewal in the whole situation. So I am, I'm so, so excited. Kelly says, need to get your stove home. Oh, you're so awesome. I love you so dearly. I feel so very blessed by all of you. And I am so grateful that you could all be a part of this today. And thank you guys for understanding my absence in a lot of ways and places because of all of this. But I really love you all. And I'm thankful for our community. I'm thankful for what God is doing in each of our lives and adding these new people. It just makes my heart sing to know that we are reaching more lives, more people in healing and in God's love and word. And there's just so many hurting people out there. And I just want to touch them all. And I know that's an impossibility, but you know, the more we can touch one life at a time, right? So anyway, I'm going to jump off of here. You guys have a fabulous day. I love you all. And I will see you next week, regular time, Wednesday, 1030 Pacific Standard. And uh, you guys take care in the meantime. God bless. Maybe. I can't see the button to end it. There we go. Ha, <laughs> ha.